hydrothermal vent on July 23, 2024, in Yellowstone National Park's Biscuit Basin is dramatic and dangerous. It was the first vent in the park to be clearly captured on video, and it highlights what is often an underappreciated source of danger. Hydrothermal vents are triggered when liquid water turns to steam in an underground cavity. When the cavity, or reservoir, is connected to the surface, a geyser can form to release that pressure. When the reservoir becomes closed and confined, especially due to silica deposition, the mixture of liquid and steam creates pressure in the confined space, much like a pressure cooker. If the pressure in the reservoir increases to a point where it exceeds the strength of the surrounding rock, the rock ruptures and an explosion occurs. The force of the explosion creates a crater, or enlarges an existing crater, and ejects rocks that can cause damage and injury. Dirty. Geyser eruptions that spew rocks and mud such as the one photographed at Walpool in Biscuit Basin in 2009, are considered to be on the lower end of the eruption spectrum. The 2018 year spring eruption in the upper geyser basin, while small, also ejected rock a short distance but did not enlarge the existing pool, so whether or not it should be classified as a hydrothermal eruption is debatable. Either way, both events were caused by pressure disturbances in shallow hydrothermal systems. At the larger end of the hydrothermal explosion spectrum are craters that formed thousands of years ago, many of which can be found in and around Yellowstone Lake. These craters are hundreds of meters, thousands of feet, across and include Indian Pond, Turbid Lake, Duck Pond, Elliott's Crater, and Pocket Basin, among others. Mary Bay is the largest of these, and at 1.5 miles (2.5 kilometers) wide, it is the largest hydrothermal explosion crater in the world. Hydrothermal vents in Yellowstone are defined by their size, which can be estimated from the dimensions of the crater. However, Determining the size of a crater can be difficult because some craters are submerged, some have eroded, and some formed sequentially over time. Despite the large number of craters by eruption date and size, some patterns can still be extracted from the data. Because small hydrothermal vents that create craters a meter, a few feet, wide or less can occur anywhere from once a year to several times per year. The largest craters are not random, as they could be triggered by external events, such as large earthquakes or landslides that cause pressure changes in shallow hydrothermal systems. However, for significant events like the one on July 23, 2024, in the Biscuit Basin, the model provides a reasonable way to estimate how often such eruptions might occur. The main unknown about the July 23, 2024, eruption is the size of the crater, which filled with air and grew rapidly after the eruption as its walls began to shift inward. Given a reasonable range of crater sizes, such an eruption might occur once every decade to a few decades on average. Larger events, those that form craters one hectare in size, might occur once every few hundred years, on average, and the largest events, those larger than 10 hectares, over 40,000 square meters, or 435,000 square feet, might occur once every few thousand years. <laughs>